Good afternoon. Welcome everybody to today's Feather webinar called Tips from a Nonprofit Expert Maximizing Year End Giving. I am joined by the wonderful Aramel Wheeler from the Food Bank of Northern Nevada. She's going to be talking to us all about end of year campaigns and how she uses Feather and digital marketing to sort of maximize donations as the holiday season approaches. Welcome, Aramel. Thank you. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. While we wait for people to join, um, we dropped a question in the chat to kind of get the conversation started. So we'll wait a couple minutes to make sure everyone gets on, but go ahead and start dropping some answers in the chat. If you have sort of an end of year or giving Tuesday initiative that's top of mind or whatever you're thinking about as you're joining today's webinar. Giving Tuesday, thanks you. Yep, lots, lots of stuff. We're going to be talking specifically about how um, Aramel actually balances lots of these like competing timelines as end of year approaches, and there's a lot of different initiatives happening all at once. So we'll be getting into how to manage all of the competing priorities, um, timing the end of year appeal, and stakeholder saturation. Yeah. Yeah, I know one of the things we're going to talk about is how Thanksgiving is so close to um, Giving Tuesday and you do both, RML, so kind of like timing things so that <laughs> you're able to actually promote both. Yes, uh, it, it definitely makes things exciting sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I see some more answers coming in here. Incorporating planned giving into end of year appeal, communicating ROI to our members and donors. Yeah. That's another huge thing. We'll be talking a little bit about sort of crafting impact statements and messaging that resonates and um, gets people engaged and sort of trusting of your of your cause. Um, okay. Nice. Tracking ROI. Yep, we'll be talking about that as well. New National Foundation. We're trying to come up with. Okay, cool. Well, this is the webinar for you. All right, well, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, feel free to keep dropping these answers in. I'd love to hear what you all are working on. But for anyone who's just joined, welcome to today's webinar. I'm joined by Aramel Wheeler from the Food Bank of Northern Nevada, and we'll be talking all about maximizing end of year giving um, with digital marketing. So let's dive into it. So real quick for anyone who is not super familiar with Feather, Feather is the digital marketing platform for nonprofits. So whether you're on here because you're looking to, you know, drive those end of year donations and improve fundraising efforts at the end of the year for Giving Tuesday, or if you're looking to, you know, do fundraising year rounds, grow awareness of your cause, anything like that, Feather has lots of tools to help you actually do that marketing and track everything, track conversions and report on your campaigns. And then we work with lots and lots of nonprofits um, sort of across the spectrum. So, you know, animal services orgs, food banks like the one we have on today, um, environmental organizations, associations. Um, so, yeah, lots of great organizations using Feather to promote their missions and, and drive um, those goals. I'm Isa Hasty. I'm the Senior Content Marketing Manager. I included my email here. We'll send out this deck after the presentation, so feel free to email me um, if you have any questions. And then welcome, Aramel. I'd love for you to just introduce yourself and a little bit about the food bank. Thank you. Um, so my name is Aramel Wheeler. I am the Marketing and Communications Manager um, at the Food Bank of Northern Nevada. I do think it's my legal obligation to make sure Issa knows it's Nevada. Um, <laughs> Um, I have been with the food bank for just about 12 years. Um, and within our marketing team, we do work extremely closely with our development team and are the ones who uh, do the majority of specifically our digital in particular, um, all digital activities that are connected to fundraising. So I've been doing this for a while and watched the um so watched a lot of changes happen across the way um and i'm excited to talk about how we have really found a great tool in feather awesome yeah once again thank you so much for taking the time to join us and share all of your insights 
Um, and yeah, if you want to talk just a little bit more about kind of um, the food bank and who you're serving. Sure. So um, the Food Bank of Northern Nevada is a member of the Feeding America Network. Um, we are a regional distribution center serving 13 counties in Nevada, as well as parts of 10 counties that are on the eastern side of the Sierra Mountains in California. So we have a really vast service area. It spans about 90,000 square miles and a very um, varied type of audience based on that. We have within um, Reno Sparks is kind of our the, the more metropolitan part of um, our service area. Um, and then we get into very rural um, communities that are, you know, hours away from another town. And so we have a lot of differing um, audiences just kind of based on um, that alone. Um, we are serving about 155,000 people every month, which for us is a significant record. And one of the things that we are really looking at this year is messaging the the fact that we are seeing significant increases in the number of people who are needing services from the food bank. Um, we work with a network of about 155 partner agencies, which are primarily food pantries. Um, but we do also work with like some shelters, low income daycares and things like that. And we are the folks who help get the food to all of those pantries in order for them to be able to then um, be stocked and ready to serve the community as they come in the door looking for assistance. Awesome. Yeah. And we'll get into a little bit later, sort of how you bridge that gap between people who know the food pantries and are familiar with them on a local level, but not being familiar with your organization and your connection to the pantries. So I think that's an interesting sort of um, thing to kind of dive into. Also, I know you mentioned that the reason you serve that eastern part of the Sierra Mountains is because like the truckers can't get over the mountains when they're icy, which being from Florida, that made quite an impression. <laughs> Thinking about yeah. driving a truck on icy mountains was unsettling <laughs> to imagine. So, um, cool. So, just some quick agenda items, and then we'll dive into the content. So, um, like I said, we'll be sending out the deck after the webinar. So, keep a lookout on your in your inbox for that. And then, feel free, of course, to drop questions in the chat as we go, and we'll get to those as we can. Um, so we're going to start off by talking a little bit about, um, you know, just sort of some general marketing tips and best practices as we head into the holiday season. So why website tracking and digital advertising is so critical at this time of year, um, how to kind of manage those competing timelines as you have Thanksgiving, Cyber Monday, Giving Tuesday, end of year, all of those things happening sort of around the same time. Um, and then Airmel is going to speak specifically to gift match campaigns because they do a really good job with those. And then we'll talk specifically about the campaigns that she runs in Feather. So sort of those audience expansion campaigns to get in front of new relevant people all year round, but especially with the goal of leading up to those bigger asks at end of year. And then talking about sort of the targeted ads and the email marketing that help drive conversions and donations. Um, so we'll get into email specifically. And then also just talking about reporting on these campaigns so you can kind of see what works or what doesn't um, and do even better next year. So let's get into sort of the marketing tips and best practices. So sort of thinking about the holiday season, obviously we all know how noisy it gets, right? We're, you know, you, your organization is competing with all of the organizations out there. And so the email inbox gets very, very noisy. It's really hard to stand out. So this is a really important sort of case for having digital advertising and targeted ads as a way to stay top of mind for people even if they're not seeing you in their email inbox, which it's very likely that they won't see you. Or if they do, there's just too much going on and they might kind of not be able to pause and make that donation because they're just, you know, inundated with so much. So, um, you know, you want to be serving ads to people where they already are online. And so around the holidays, this might be, you know, shopping for gifts, looking up recipes, scrolling on social, things like that. And this is something you want to be doing all year round, but especially during this time of year when people are just so busy and there's so much noise. Um, and another cool thing about tracking your website traffic and then being able to serve ads based on it is that you can actually capture that web traffic that you're getting on a huge day like giving tuesday where you're going to get a really big spike in web traffic but not everybody's going to give on that day 
but then you can actually serve ads to those people heading into the rest of the end of the year, right? So if they don't give on Giving Tuesday, they might still be primed to give to your cause later in December or even in the new year. And so kind of capturing all of that data and having that to work with and segment and reach out to um, even past those big days is super important. So that's a good sort of segue into my first question for you, Aramel, which is if you could talk sort of about what your marketing looked like before Feather and how having all of this data in Feather has impacted your ability to sort of get personalized and segmented in your marketing. Yeah. Um, before we started using the, the Feather platform, um, particularly our digital marketing was very limited. We worked with, we, we do work with a fundraising vendor for direct mail. And that vendor also did all of our display um, as far as the digital side of things. Um, and we never got to see even the slightest type of data around how those things were um, performing. So we really were just left to leave all of that in their hands and, and hope that they were the experts that they promised that they were. Um, and outside of the things that we did with our vendor, um, we also did, you know, occasionally we would do like Facebook or um, Instagram ads or like boosted posts, things like that. Um, we already did have a somewhat robust email um, marketing plan that we were using, but we weren't in a position where, like, like with Feather, where you get to see all of the data come together in the same way um, we were, you know, so things were a little more segmented out and kind of siloed as far as the data goes. Um, we've really in, been able to take a better look at the numbers and see the things that are are resonating specifically with particular groups in the in the the segments of people that we're emailing or serving ads to. Um, I would say the email side is where we probably dig in a little further to the data currently. Um, but that definitely does help to drive some of our strategy around our ads as well, because we see the things that people seem to be being more pulled in by when they are reading parts of the emails. And it helps to make help us make some decisions about what type of content to create our ads around as well. For sure. Yeah. And the thing that I hear most often from nonprofits that I talk to isn't that they're not doing any kind of digital advertising or not tracking their website traffic. It's that a lot of the time an outside agency is doing it and they just don't have that visibility into the data and they don't have everything in one place. So they might be doing their email marketing in one platform and they're kind of running that themselves. And then digital ads are happening somewhere else and they don't have visibility and then social sort of happening on the side. And so, yeah, I think the benefit of a platform like Feather is that you're pulling all of that into one platform, but you also have full control of that data. And it also gives you that firsthand insight into, like you said, what your audience is actually responding to so that you have that information and you can craft the messaging appropriately, as opposed to hoping that some agency is taking those insights and working yeah. them into the next you know, round of ads. I think the other thing that has been a game changer for us is when you're working with an agency, you know, there's so much lead time into everything that you're doing. And being able to have this access and, and look at the data, we're able to pivot a little more quickly yeah. and be more agile as we see how things are performing or equally if they're not performing, you know, if, if there's things where th that something is landing a little flat instead of spending all of the time and, and money, frankly, on continuing forward with that, and learning three to six months later mm -hmm. that it didn't really work very well, um, you have the opportunity to kind of flip things around a little bit if you need to. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that yeah. ability to kind of change things in real time, like literally day by day, if you want to, makes a huge difference in, in how the campaigns perform ultimately. Yeah, definitely. 
Um, cool. And then I guess, you know, can you speak a little bit to the importance of driving awareness year round? So we're talking about end of year specifically, and we'll get into that. But obviously, you can't just wait until end of year and make these big asks. You want to be nurturing trust sort of year round and getting on people's radar. So can you speak to sort of how you do that and how you think about that? Yeah. You know, at the food bank, we um, like I think most nonprofits, we definitely see a huge bump in our support um, at the holiday season, not only because people are giving um, just more generously as across the board, but also because people tend to think about feeding their neighbors at the holiday season. And it's vital for us to make sure that we are, you know, being able to maintain that support throughout the entire year because our numbers remain just as high, whether it's February or June. And, and in fact, we see an uptick in summer that people don't necessarily know about. Um, and so we do a lot throughout the year, both in running some evergreen type of content as well well as, you know, really building out like kind of some thematic messaging based on what it is that's kind of happening at the food bank at any particular time of year um, to make sure that we're always talking, we're talking all year long, but also keeping the content fresh and very right now with um, whatever it is that's kind of happening in our world at the time. Yeah. And we'll get into how you use email later on to kind of do a split of like the e-appeals and then also that ongoing cultivation where you're staying on people's radars and kind of providing them information and updates. And, and definitely there it's strategic, right? You have something that you want from them, but you're not always asking outright. You're kind of keeping them in the loop and providing them with some kind of value, um, you know, in their inbox so that they're primed to give when the time comes. So, yeah. And then real quick, if you could talk a little bit about that sort of nuance, and this probably applies to, you know, food banks more so than maybe other nonprofits, but that idea that people are familiar with their food bank in their local town, but they don't, or sorry, their food pantry, but they don't necessarily understand that the food bank, your food bank that they're seeing ads for, and you're asking for donations, they don't connect that with that pantry. And so while in theory, they do support and want to support you, they don't, they don't realize that it's like one in the same. So how do you kind of bridge that gap? You know, we, um, that these are things that we have struggled with for the entirety of the time that I've been at the food bank and, and even further. Um, we definitely face a challenge where to many people, a food pantry and a food bank are synonymous and they, they're picturing kind of one very specific view of what it looks like. You know, you're going to a local church, you're visiting, you know, getting some some canned vegetables, fruit. There's a lot of ramen in this version of what a food bank is. Um, and, and really that is a food pantry, which what food pantries are have also grown and evolved over the years as everyone in this mission has really put more and more intentional thought into making sure that we're not just giving people food, but that we're actually sustaining them with good nutrition. Um, but when, particularly when you come to a food bank and it is more of that distribution center model, people don't necessarily understand the scope of what we're doing. They don't recognize or, or know that the church that they attend that they know has that food pantry is very likely getting the food that they are able to serve to neighbors through their relationship with the food bank. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we deal with uh, within our organization specifically a little bit larger uh, scope of that because of how large and vast our service area is. So there are a lot of communities where the pantry is getting 100% of the food that they receive from the food bank, but the community doesn't necessarily know that that is happening. They just know about the pantry's existence. 
So that is something that is a much larger part of initiatives that we are running. And we have started this year to kind of move into using Feather with some of those things. Um, and some of them are really ads that are very, did you know? Like we want to really make sure that we are catching, you know, some opportunity to do some education for those communities, particularly before we would decide to come into that same space and really start to push more of an actual fundraising ask. Um, we want to spend some really intentional time doing that education side first. Yeah. And I know that you mentioned that you um, sort of segment by uh, area or, or region, right? So you can get sort of more specific in, in the ad copy and say like, we did you know that our food bank serves your local food pantry and kind of get a little bit more specific yes. and drop those yeah places so that they recognize them. Cool. All right. Let's go into this topic. So kind of managing all of these competing timelines as you have Thanksgiving, Giving Tuesday, holiday campaigns, all of this. So can you talk a little bit about the different campaigns that you are balancing and how you how you manage all of the competing timelines? Sure. So for us, the holiday season really starts in September, um, both because September is Hunger Action Month um, across the country. And so that is when we start the, the calendar of communications really starts to kind of mushroom at that point and become significantly um, larger as it is because we have a month's worth of different kind of activations and things that we're pushing. Um, and we, over the years, have kind of developed Hunger Action Month as the way that we start some of those softer, like get involved type of asks. So there definitely is opportunity for giving. And, and some of that is talked about through Hunger Action Month. But it's a little bit more of a focus on the grass, grassroots part of our work. You know, donate to a food drive, come out to our warehouse and volunteer with us. Let us show you how much fun you can have while making a difference in our community. Um, as well as a focus on some of the advocacy work that we do both at the local and federal level. Um, and at the same time, we're really, our, our fundraising team is really gearing up um, for the holiday season. And that's about the time that our, um, some of our holiday hinting, I would almost say, like direct mail pieces. We're not yet specifically talking about Thanksgiving, but we are starting to talk about all of the things that sit on family shoulders as we move into the winter season. Um, and then we do, we go, we go into um, Thanksgiving and feeding families around the holiday, you know, the specific, this, especially when you're talking about Thanksgiving, this holiday, that's all about the meal. Mm -hmm. um, we also have Giving Tuesday, of course, we have a really big one day telethon that happens just a couple of weeks after Giving Tuesday on some really tough years. It's been the, the week of Giving Tuesday, which gets oh, really man. difficult. <laughs> um, and then just your basic end of year um, fundraising as well. So I would say we spend a lot of our time in the, in the months leading up to all of that, being very intentional with, you know, so we know what stories we're going to be using, what, um, what the pieces are that we're going to use from the fundraising side. And how do we pepper into this um, other communications and marketing work that will make it all feel like it was one cohesive piece when it all comes together? Um, and so that is a big piece that we kind of focus on. And 
We do try to find places where we take some breaks along the way, not in communication overall, but little places where there can be some space where we're not asking. Uh Um, In Nevada, we also, on an election year, we have a particularly challenging um, extra challenge that, that presents itself because we are a purple state. We are one of the, you know, so, I mean, like everybody is inundated the month of October, you might as well not even bother because it's all politics all of the time. And so even that we've tried to find some strategy around, we don't want to just be silent and, and be completely missed in that time because we, it is an important time frame for us, but how can we be a little bit more of like the fun little burst of something exciting Uh or hopeful in your email or coming across, you know, an ad as you're browsing, whatever it is. Um, And we're really intentional about like, how do we do that in a way that feels like we are making it a little less, um, frankly, kind of gross to be in our state with all of the things hitting everyone's email and text messages and et cetera. Yeah. And I think it's cool. Nonprofits are in this sort of unique position to be able to tap into that like hopefulness and optimism sometimes as needed, you know, because obviously you have a mission and like any organization or any company, you have, you need to drive revenue and you need to hit your goals, but you also have something that for-profit companies don't have, which is like this sort of cause that is related to yeah real world impact and and people or whatever it is and so i think being able to tap into that messaging as like a little reprieve from all of the the chaos is is a really cool thing to be able to do yeah we hope so (laughs) um and then you might not have specifics for this but if you do like any kind of tips on ways to get creative when it comes to holiday messaging or like, you know, I know that you lean into holiday traditions or Thanksgiving a little bit in some of your messaging. Do you have any kind of tips for people to kind of, yeah, get creative end of year with those holidays? Um, you know, I, th- I think that um, one thing that doesn't feel particularly creative, but is a little different sometimes in the space is that we are very intentional in choosing joy-filled, happy images. Um, we, our voice at the food bank and, and really largely across the Feeding America network is to lean in to the hopeful side of the fact that these organizations are here to make sure that people are not missing meals rather than, you know, the, the, less hopeful side of the awful things that are happening if people Mm -hmm. are missing meals. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think at the holiday season in particular, that, that really, the creative of that becomes really, really important. Um, And we do lean in a little bit, like the giving Tuesday campaign that we do, we've been doing this, this one particular campaign for about eight or nine years at this point. And so, I mean, we, we truly message it as like our favorite holiday tradition Mm -hmm. and kind of lean in within some of the copy to like connecting it back to, you know, some, what are some of your favorite holiday memories? And because of you, you're helping provide that to other people, you know, Um, but not for anything out of this world creative necessarily. Yeah. Sounds like Patty is doing something similar um, at her food bank. Yeah. No, it's great. Yeah. To be able to kind of, obviously there's two, two ways of viewing. It's sort of more the glass half full approach. Yeah. So yeah. Um, cool. And then um, let's talk a little bit about gift match campaigns. Um, so can you talk sort of about sort of uh, how you think about setting that up and how you secure that, type of support? Sure. Um, We have, we, we do have a few matches throughout the year. And fortunately, and unfortunately, several of them come at the end of the year. 
And so we've had to get kind of creative with what we do to try to make it still feel like it truly is like a great opportunity for our supporters and to make them each feel a little different from each other. So it's not just one ongoing thing. Um, As far as like securing them, I really, all the props to that goes to our fundraising team. Um, We do a few, a couple of them are like corporate matches. And so um, on our fundraising team, we do have um, one person who she is dedicated exclusively to managing the relationships with our corporate supporters. And we, we really look at those matches as an opportunity, not only to, of course, leverage to get, you know, raise additional funds through, through the match. But when we hear from corporate donors who are looking to have a lot of times they'll say like, I want to have a bigger impact. I want to have more of a reach. I want to be able to do something bigger. And so we say, well, how about if you help us raise all of this extra money because of your gift? Um, And certainly when there is recognition, you know, companies that are potentially using like marketing dollars for this support, um, it really is something that can be particularly enticing to them because of the amount of publicity that they will receive. Mm -hmm. And that is something that, you know, some companies really need to be able to show that they, that they got something like that out of it, particularly if they're using marketing dollars over like community engagement dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, So we work a lot with that. We we try whenever possible to make sure that it is a match that we are able to say who the donor is. We still sometimes have times that it's a, it, you know it's somebody who prefers to remain anonymous, um, but we definitely have learned over the years that I think it feels a little less sincere sometimes if you're if you're not actually saying this is who's matching the money. Um, people sometimes I think question the authenticity of it then. Mm -hmm. And so whenever possible, if you can secure a match where even if it isn't that they want tons of recognition, where they at least are willing to allow you to publicize who it is Mm -hmm. can be really helpful. That's interesting. Do you feel like people question whether the match is actually fully happening or? I, I don't know if it's that or if it's just, Like, I think that, um, I don't know. I just, I have learned over the years that some people are pretty cynical about it when you don't, when you anonymous. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing all of that. And, you know, obviously I think we can all agree that gift match campaigns are impactful just on the receiving end. You know, if you, if you see that a gift is being matched, I think it leads you to like think further into how your gift is going to make an impact. And so I know that for me personally, if I, if I see a gift match as two X or three X, it's I'm, I'm more likely to want to give, but also to give more because it's, you know, you can quickly be like, Oh wait, it's like actually 30 instead of 10. And so, yeah, Mm -hmm. um, definitely highly impactful and a a great way to kind of create urgency too, especially if, you know, there's a closing window or like a time frame for the gift match. Um, Yes. Super impactful campaign type there. Okay. So let's talk about some of your actual feather campaigns. Um, So let's start with affinity targeting. So for anyone who's unfamiliar, this is a campaign type that feather offers that lets you actually get in front of new relevant audiences. Um, And you can select from groups within feather and this leverages demographic industry data, buyer, you know, purchase history, things like that. Um, and you can get pretty specific with this. And so you can target, you know, affluent donors in a specific area or, you know, um, new moms living in Nevada, things like that. So you can get very, very specific. Um, so I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about sort of what types of groups you are trying to reach through these campaigns. Um, I will do my best. This <laughs> is one of our, this is one of our managed services. So I, I can't say I can speak as fully to it. 
Um, this is our first time kind of using some of the affinity targeting. We um, launched it at the beginning of our fiscal year in July to kind of test some of the waters with it. And we are using them really have really focused on those different communities that we talked about earlier. How do we reach people who have shown an affinity for supporting human services related causes within their community? And um, so the ads are being served as kind of that educational piece that we talked about before. Um, and really are looking at we so each of them is targeted to specific zip codes that are based within the communities that we wanted to kind of get a little bit more saturation um, into those communities about us. And the details of exactly which audiences they pick, I have to confess, I should have probably looked at, but I didn't. <laughs> no worries. Um, cool. Yeah. Um, no, these are, it's cool how you have it split by, um, by region too. So you can get a little bit more specific, but yeah, as you can see here, this is sort of what a campaign, an affinity campaign looks like in Feather. You can see the, um, the heat maps here. And then also the, um, obviously conversions were not set up for this. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you have your creatives here. Um, also, I think I'm misspeaking. Conversions were probably set up for the overall flight, but one sort of caveat with this campaign type, which I think is important to mention, is that there's campaigns that are not going to drive conversions, right? Because the goal is specifically to drive awareness, get in front of new people. So if you see zero conversions here, that's because conversions are not the goal of this campaign. The goal is impressions and clicks through to your site. Um, which obviously we can see that the reach here um, was good. So, yeah. yeah. And I do think that that is something that's really important. Um, I certainly, of course, when we look at the overall performance of what's happening on Feather, we are absolutely looking at ROI. Um, and we, we don't want to be spending money that's not at least balancing itself out. However, particularly when we look at the display ads um, part of a feather rather than like our email side, um, I think that it's important to remain realistic about the number of conversions that are kind of going to come specifically from that versus the fact that, you know, Isa has seen our ads throughout the last six months and now she sees our telethon or she sees us, you know, at an event or whatever the thing is. And um, so we try really hard within the entirety, and this isn't only digital, with it, but within the entirety of our marketing and, and development space to remember that just because in this case, it's like zero conversions does not mean that it's not the reason that somebody, you know, gave. Yep. Exactly. And again, it's like, this is part of that reason to have all of your campaigns in one place, because then you can see yeah. later on how these awareness campaigns did feed into those campaigns that drove conversions. You know, you can kind of piece together the journey that each individual donor actually took to, to convert ultimately. Yes. Um, and then, so Michaela, RML strategist, is actually on here and um, just <laughs> a little bit of intel. Thanks, Michaela. Um, so it looks like for the affinity targeting campaigns, you were targeting people who were interested in health related causes, general donor, and philanthropist affinity lists. So, yeah. I knew it was perfect because she's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then we have a question from Jessica. So can you share a little bit about how your organization budgets to spend on Feather ads? Yeah. We, um, on the ad spend itself, so not counting, of course, like the, the, the platform license. We, last year we spent about $7,000. And this year, um, I was given the gift of being able to update my but uh, up my budget to between ten and twelve. 
Um, and that is for the entire fiscal year um, where we are running some really robust campaigns specifically at the holidays, but we are actively running some ads all of the time. Got it. Thanks. Um, yeah. And so let's go ahead and answer Steve's question because we've kind of alluded to it. So it's a combination, but I'll let you speak to that. Yeah. So we do have a, we, we do a combination. Um, we, we do all of our emails, whether they are fundraising specific or other, um, are all done in house, um, on my team. And then we do work with some managed services. Um, and I will say that we are just now in our kind of the beginning of our second year working with Feather, particularly in that first year. That was really helpful um, because they're walking you through the strategy and, and everything all the way. So along the way. So we've had the help, but I've been absorb absorbing and learning a lot about the platform as we've gone. So we have... Um, about 15 digital campaigns that we do through managed services. All of those are different types of display. Um, and then we are still using the platform ourselves, not only for email, but also for other ads and um, testing the waters in next week, actually, with a couple other um, of the campaign types in Feather. Cool. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, and I know you said that, you know, with the Giving Tuesday flight specifically, you set that up. Yeah. So you've kind I of all learned that. from what the services team has uh, created for you and provided and, and you're sort of running things on your own as well, which is yeah. the goal. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, okay, let's go ahead and talk about search keyword campaigns. So these are um, campaigns that allow you to actually target people with ads across the web based on keywords they've searched, but after they've searched them. So when you hear keyword or keyword search, you might think of Google ads, which are those campaigns that allow you to show up you know, as a sponsored ad at the top of the search page on Google. So this is different than that. It's great to run them alongside each other. Doing both is great. Um, but search keyword campaigns allow you basically when someone searches for something in a search engine, then after they leave that page or as they're browsing the web after, you're showing them those display ads on social and on the different sites that they're visiting, just like with retargeting, just like with geofencing, those ads are showing up where those people are. Um, and so, like I said, it's a great thing to run in tandem with Google ad campaigns, just so you kind of you're really capitalizing on those you know keywords that people are searching for and leveraging that data but this is a way to show up um, consistently, you know, not just on the page where they're searching. So, oh, sorry. Um, so yeah, can you talk a little bit about, the, again, this might be, Michaela, feel free to chime in here with more intel, um, but if you can speak a little bit to um, these campaigns and um, how, you know, you determine the keywords to target and all that, and I'll, I'll open up a couple of these campaigns. Yeah. Um... This is something that Michaela and I worked together on um, because I definitely think that she has that ability to think more broadly. I was like food bank, you know, <laughs> um, but we, we certainly, you know, target, did some keyword targeting around um, different terms that people would look for if they're looking to get involved in their community, volunteering, things like that. Um, also, to be frank, some of our competitors, you know, if someone is is searching for, a, I hate calling another nonprofit a competitor, but <laughs> if, if someone is searching for a, another community nonprofit where there's some overlay or, you know, if someone is interested in that, that nonprofit's work, they likely would also have some affinity towards the work that we're doing. So we do a little bit of that. Um, and then just kind of the general, um, you know, pantry, things like that. And I'm sure Michaela could say 
<laughs> far more specifically than I do. Yeah. No, and it's funny that you're you have talked <laughs> about calling a, another nonprofit a competitor because that's not obviously how you're thinking about it. But you know, there's audience there there's audience overlap there. And I was yeah. talking to um a, a theater, a community theater that uses Feather the other day. And and that user was talking about how they, there's another theater across the street with like a similar audience. And so they'll kind of geofence that theater sometimes and try yeah. to those people to come to their shows. And so it's all, all in the name of spreading the good word about something, right? <laughs> yeah. When last year, when we were celebrating our 40th anniversary, we did that even a little bit more because we're like, okay, well, we know these are, really pop we were hosting an event and we are not typically event we are not we do not have like an annual gala that's not a usual part of of our thing mm -hmm. and so um how do we get out there to the people who might want to come to this well yeah. what are the really popular nonprofit events in town that are again kind of complementary missions or the style of the event is is kind of similar um so we use that even a little bit more when we were doing some um awareness campaigns around that part yeah um and then michaela dropped this in the chat as well which i think is a really important um sort of point is that when you're thinking about keywords and keyword search campaigns you want to be trying to get in the mind of the actual donor or supporter who's searching those terms. So what are people actually going to be looking for? Um, and this might be different than what you expect. You know, it's it's not necessarily the words that you use to promote your cause. It's It might be something else. And so kind of trying mm -hmm. to understand, um, yeah, what, what that end user is actually typing into search engines and then targeting those words. Um, okay, and then real quick, let's talk about email mapping. So this is also known as CRM retargeting. This is basically using someone's email address as the you know unique identifier for serving targeted ads. And so um, no emails are sent through this campaign. This is just serving ads again, those display ads across the web based on email. So this is a great way to you know target some like lapsed donors or people who attended an event last year, but maybe haven't engaged with you in a while or aren't checking their emails from you, but you can serve them ads and get back on their radar. Can you talk a little bit about um, kind of how this helps you, you know, re-engage those lapsed donors or people that you haven't heard from in a while? Yeah, we use this a lot, particularly in the holiday season, because we have um, we have a lot of people, supporters who are maybe food drive donors, volunteers, etc., who are not in our usual stream of solicitations. So they're not getting typically most of the year and they're not getting emails asking for donations. They're not getting direct mail pieces, but there are some times throughout the year, particularly when we're doing our giving Tuesday um, campaign, we do a three times match. And those are times when we're like, these folks might actually really want to know about that. Mm -hmm. And so it's, um, it's a slightly less invasive way, I think, than sometimes just coming out, to an audience that you um, don't typically ask, make make financial asks of. In our case, with that Giving Tuesday, we do kind of mar marry it with an email. Um, but we've been serving the ads for a while before they then kind of get into that. So there are they've already been seeing it kind of softly as they've been just browsing. Mm -hmm. um, and then also we have, you know, people who subscribe to our kind of like monthly what's happening at the food bank newsletter. And we will utilize this, um, the email mapping to be able to serve some ads to them that allow us to do a little bit more of that awareness side of things as well. Cool. And then, yeah, let's get into some retargeting campaigns here. So retargeting is, you know, reaching people after they've visited your site and left. And so using that sort of web traffic that you're tracking with a super pixel like Feather offers to then be able to serve ads to those people after they leave with the goal of bringing them back to, to your site. So, you know, most of you probably know that it takes multiple touch points to actually get somebody to become a donor or convert in any way. And so someone might visit your site 
but then leave or see an ad from you, but not give right away. And so you have to continue showing up in places, not just in their email inbox to really create that sort of cohesive multi-channel experience and get them to eventually make that, um, make that move, make that donation. So um, let's talk um, sort of specifically about some of the campaigns that you, some of the retargeting campaigns that you've run um, in Feather. Sure. Um, so yeah, let's start with this one. I know that this is um, trying to get people to the get involved section of your website, right? So can you share a little bit about this campaign? Yeah, we, um, I will put the caveat on this that we do exclude from all of these campaigns that we're about to talk about. We exclude anybody who has visited our website specifically to visit the get help section of the website. Um, since that is more the outreach side of what we're doing. Um, so the get, in, the, the get involved ads are kind of our, like, come be our friend. And anybody who visits our website is served, is, is can be retargeted to be served. These ads that then drive to this page that is kind of the introduction of ways that you can start to be involved with the food bank, um, but, you know, visiting, going to events, becoming a volunteer, hosting a food drive, things like that. Great. And then, yeah, let's talk about donation dropout as a use case. So this is a great, you know, use case for retargeting. Obviously you can do this with emails as well. And we'll get into a specific type of email that Feather offers called AutoSend that lets you actually trigger emails based on donation dropout or card abandonment. Um, but can you talk about how you use retargeting ads for this? We, I would say the main thing is we have decided to be really careful about how we do this. So we do retarget people who visit the donation page without converting. Um, but you'll see the the copy on it is like we are really intentionally, we don't use like a come back. <laughs> we um, saw you on this page. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we, but, and we try to just, again, it's, you know, it's happy. It's, it's, um, look at what the difference you can make. I think that for us, this is one of the strategy is more about that, the artwork that we're using, the, the photo of the lovely family um, and that we hope will bring people back and want to be part of, of nourishing people. Yeah. And that's a good distinction. I think some organizations do lean into the kind of like, Hey, did you forget something like, you know, complete your donation. Yeah. But it's perfectly fine to sort of on the back end be seeing who's showing high intent and who might actually want to make that donation, but their wallet was in the other room or they got distracted and busy, but they actually like want to give to your cause and taking that information and then continuing to sort of nudge them gently and remind them with ads like this. So you don't have to do the sort of like Amazon approach of like, you left something in your cart. You can just use the data that you have available to you on, on who's interested and and just continue to show up for them, just like you're doing with those awareness campaigns and, and building that trust over time. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, let's talk about using retargeting for Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday is the thing that we probably go out the hardest for. So um, we retarget, again, um, all website visitors who did not spend their time on the get help section. Um, it's, it's the one time a year where um, even if someone never kind of visited, I know we're going to talk to them and uh, talk about them in a minute, but without someone necessarily having been on a high intent page, we are still driving this directly to our donation page um, rather than a little bit more of that, like, you know, come learn a little more first. We're just coming right in with, give us some money. Yep. Um, cool. Also, I'm in Florida and it just started pouring. Obviously there's a hurricane coming our way. It just started oh. raining so hard and got much darker. So I'm really hoping my power does not go out in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> so intense out there. Okay, and then let's talk about these sort of high intent um, page visits and how you use that to determine um, you know, who you wanna serve ads to? 
So these are specifically donation driving ads. Um, they primarily are um, content that's, you know, that's designed to, um, uh, I mean, they go directly to our donation page. And so those are retargeted to people who have visited either the get help, or, I'm sorry, the get involved section of our website or the ways to give section. It, you know, if people have spent some time on there, we start to feel a little more comfortable with coming in with, and you'll see as some of these, they're a little bit more kind of an educational still. We, we lean into some of the stats and things like that on these ads. Um, but they do drive directly to our donation page. Yeah. I'm just here. Yep. All right. And let's get into email. So um, just to kind of a quote, quick refresh on Feather email campaigns for anyone who's new. So we offer two different types of email sends in Feather. There's single send campaigns. So this is basically what you think of as like a typical email newsletter, event reminders, sort of targeting a specific predefined group with a timed email send that you send out. Um, and then auto send campaigns, which I mentioned earlier, um, you're able to kind of catch people when they're super engaged on like an individual basis by setting an automated email that triggers when somebody takes a, a specific action. So if that's visiting your donate page and then not donating, you can um, send them an email, you know, 24 hours after or even a couple days after sort of encouraging them to come back and get that donation. Or again, just like staying on the radar and maybe providing them with some information or some impact statements. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a big ask, but sort of using that data on where people have been on your site and then serving them ads and, and sending these emails based on based on that creates just that personalized experience, you know, based on what people are actually doing. Um, and so, yeah, I just pulled in this example here. This is from the Japan America Society of Washington, DC. I love this email template because it's just so pretty to look at, but also you can see that, you know, Feather offers the standard email metrics, like click through rates, open rates, all of that. But then you can also see conversions from emails. So this, um, this one email drove 681 registrations to this event that it was promoting. So it's really cool to be able to kind of see the conversions from an individual email versus, you know, all of your email marketing campaigns. So let's talk about how you kind of do the cultivation side of things and stay on people's radar with those regular comms. And then we'll talk a little bit about donations. Sure. I would say that the number one thing that we have decided over the last 18 months is to fight our instinct to worry about being in people's in inboxes too much. And I, we are still quite conservative. I'm not, but we, I, we held back for so long mm -hmm. because we didn't want to be in particularly when you get into that holiday season. And I would challenge people when you're thinking through your entire communication strategy that it is sometimes worthwhile to add some extra email into someone's inbox if it means particularly that every time they are hearing from you, it is not just to ask for money. And so we have built out, you know, a, a, a strategy and a, and a calendar of communications where people are hearing from us multiple times two to three usually times a month in a way that has nothing to do with our fundraising. It is just about what's happening here at the food bank. You know, kind of, we have one very specific, it's truly a newsletter. Um, and then other, we, we call it behind the shelves or cultivation series. Um, it's just like some kind of come and let us take you along with what's going on. And, I think that it's really important. I don't know about other places, but at our food bank, when we start to look at the calendar and people start to get a little uncomfortable sometimes with the number of emails, we typically are at a place where we're emailing about once a week total. Mm -hmm. um, and that does include asks that we're making. Um, but these cultivation emails, they perform really strongly for us. We people talk to us about them all the time. We get replies to them where people are asking, 
you know, follow up questions or just saying thank you for letting me know about this. And I think that they are a really important part of the strategy for fundraising. That's amazing that you get people actually like re referencing yeah. them and replying. That's the ultimate it's so fun. sign that people are engaging. Um, yeah, and I know you have this behind the scenes series um, to kind of get people, you know, understanding what's happening at the food bank and at the pantries. And um, yeah, I think that's a, a cute way to kind of stay on people's radar with something that, again, like you said, is not an ask, but it's just kind of like, here's what's happening um, on our end of things. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, let's talk about the Giving Tuesday fundraising emails. I know we're at time, but hopefully people can stay on just a couple minutes longer because I think we've got some good stuff to share here. Um, yeah. So let's talk about the Black Friday um, email. Yeah. So our Giving Tuesday campaign, especially as Issa was saying, because we have such a busy holiday season as far as the communications go, um, I know that there are a lot of nonprofits that they start their Giving Tuesday campaign earlier into November. And I'm even seeing some starting to talk a little bit about it already locally. Um, but for us, that doesn't work because it just muddies the message when we're really trying to focus on Thanksgiving. So uh, several years ago, we launched what it's, it's, we call it the Giving Tuesday five day challenge. So every year there is, we, you know, it, it is a goal that we set how much to raise and issue kind of this challenge to the community to help us. And so we do a three email series, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and on Giving Tuesday itself. Um, and that three email series goes to anybody who is in our e-appeal segment within Feather. So donor, active donors that we have emails on file for are who receives the email series. And then we do one additional email that goes only on Giving Tuesday, and it goes to really the entirety of the rest of our email um, list. And that is largely made up of volunteers and people who have subscribed and supported the food bank in other ways, but not necessarily financially. Um, and the one other part of this is we all in this one single send email, we also include our recurring donors. We don't typically include them in anything in any other individual one off asks since they are already giving to us monthly. But we do include them in this and the copy on that that particular email is written to specifically um, acknowledge you. Uh, and it's not the copy in that example there because that's yeah. like the, that's not the single send that goes to the larger group, but yeah. it's written specifically to acknowledge like you're already doing a lot to support us all year long. And we really appreciate that. Um, and it invites them in case they want to take advantage of the triple match or to potentially consider sharing the email with their network and just letting folks know about the opportunity to triple any gift given to us that day. Awesome. And then let's talk a little bit about tracking and reporting on your campaigns. So can you talk a little bit about how Feather's reporting features have kind of helped you prove results um, and, and showcase them internally to your board, all of that? I This is to me the most exciting thing about Feather. Um, to be able to have the access to this type of information. And I, I love that you can look at it in so many different ways. Like I think that most of us who are, are, are marketing and um, particularly when you're talking about email in particular, we're used to being able to see, dive into that one email and see, okay, here was my click through rate. Here was my open rate, my unsubscribes, whatever the things are. And so that's great information to have. Obviously, I'm, I we look at that on, on our emails, but I really more than that, love the ability to look at the data holistically and to be able to really see 
all like all of our things within one particular flight. And even now with this new dashboard, every time I go, this is for those of you who might not know what Issa is showing right now is kind of new. And so it's not just the, in any in individual flight, it's your entire performance across Feather. And every time I go into mine, it just makes me so excited. <laughs> um, because I think that um, sometimes, like we were talking about before, if you look really granularly at things and you look at like, well, this one ad has zero conversions, it it can, you can start to get, I can, maybe not, maybe not everybody, but I can start to really kind of spin into like overthinking and the ability to look at the larger picture and see how everything is playing together and what it's doing for us is really been very important for us to be able to show. And, um, even like for me to be able to show my board of directors how things are performing and, um, and, and provide it in a way that sometimes when we talk about these things, it's kind of over the head of people who aren't living and breathing like digital marketing, you know, so to be able to provide them with just some numbers and, and the graphs and things, they can understand that versus if I'm, you know, if I'm talking about like, well, our click through rate on this email, they're like, well, what does that mean? What is it? Is that good? So, you know, the other thing is the ability to kind of like pull the reports and, and show people how it compares to kind of industry standards and things like that and, and be able to guide things that way has been really helpful. Um, and I would say the one other thing that we also members of my development team have really appreciated is the opportunity to look at how any one individual person is interacting with the things that we are sharing. So if my major gifts officer is, you know, preparing for a meeting or something with one of his um, donors, um, he can, he can, ask me for some of that information and we can kind of look at, you know, oh, every time we've talked about this topic, this person seems to engage a little bit more. These are the links that they, that they tend to be drawn to clicking on. Um, and it's equally as valuable to be able to pull it up and say, this, this donor has never one time even opened an email we've sent them like that. That is just as important um, for the folks who are doing that, you know, frontline fundraising work um, for them to be able to have some of that information available to them. And we've not ever been able to have it at this scale in such a complete picture before. Great. It's great to hear. Yeah. And I, I tried to sort of showcase that a little bit as you were talking, but you can obviously click into specific people in your community and feather and see, you know, what they're engaging with, what emails they are receiving um, and kind of really take a look at that individual journey. So that can be really helpful um, for developing those donors, like you said, and kind of honing in on this, the individual journeys. Um, and then, yeah, I just wanted to sort of show this uh, campaign report. This is from the 2023 appeals. Um, yeah. So this, yeah. Obviously knocked it out of the park in terms of donations driven. It was very exciting. Yeah. I was for sure the hero the day that we had that report come out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Much deserved. Cool. Well, that, let me get back to here. Yeah. So that wraps things up for today's webinar. Thanks for everyone for sticking around. I know we went a little bit over time. Um, and Aramel, thank you again so much for joining. Did you have anything else you wanted to add before we call it? I don't think so. Cool. Well, thank you so much for taking your time out of your day and for everyone else who joined. Um, and then, you know, if, if you liked what you saw today and you're interested in learning more about how Feather can help you run some of these campaigns, whether that's audience expansion advertising campaigns, you know, if you're looking to switch email providers or try a new email platform, um, you know, any of the things that we showed today, 
uh, Feather can help you do those things. So drop a one in the chat if you would like us to reach out with some more information and drop a two if you are a Feather user and you just want to connect with your customer success manager about some campaigns you're running. So yeah, I'll give everyone just a second to drop some in the chat. But yeah, thanks again for joining today and we will see you on the next one.